awesome. Okay, so the backstory on this. Last February, we made an upgrade to the forklift. We put the Sidewinder swing carriage on. So now the forks can swivel 90 degrees to the left, 90 degrees to the right. However, they're connected by these two perfect. auxiliary uh, hydraulic ports that have no feathering ability. <laughs> so when you just tap the button, that's what happens. Anyway, that combined with the truss jib has made our life much simpler. Uh, the trick, by the way, if you want to feather that control, is boom out or in, so you kind of split the pressure on the hydraulics. <laughs> ah, that is classic. That is classic. Ah, the joys of being a two-person crew. So while Kyle's in the forklift, that means I have to go back and forth. The little three-pound maul makes quick work of lining up the edge of that five and a half by 15 right at the corner of the plate. Uh, ignore what you're seeing here. There's a little bit of a mistake that we repaired. Uh, focus though on, we already have our strap installed on top of the wall, and then it will get nailed to the underside of the beam. Now, you do get a load reduction with the CSHP installed in this way, but you just add a few extra inches, not a big deal. The SDWS timber screws is our preferred way of fastening because the little self-piloting bit on the end of those, or tip, I guess self-piloting tip, it won't split out. Also, if I need to move it for any reason, I can. I'm gonna basically go up and down. Not that Kyle can hear me, but I still find that I'm speaking out loud while I'm signaling. That. Oh, got it. <laughs> Just for the record, I identify at two inches taller. If at first you don't succeed. I would have had the three pound mall here. So toe screw again. Notice that the glue lamb that it's sitting on extends to the right inside the wall and then extends out. And that's to avoid a post right on the front porch. Edge. Here, I'll give you, I can help you. Here we frame our roof at 24 inches on center. So butting the exterior foam, in this case, the insulation, that's the corner of my building, 23 and a quarter, rafter long. I won't move my hand. Nice. Pulling layout evenly all the way through the back ensures that even though we're going to frame up and over that room in front of you with an overframed roof, all of the jacks will still land on two foot centers, making okay, our roof sheathing know. easy. So that works out pretty good. One more thing to know, I have two studs nailed there at the corner. That's because we're using the Zip R6 panel, which is one inch poly iso foam plus the 7 16 panel. So you need additional backing for your corner trim. Hey. So a big part of what's gonna take place in this video is all the walls are framed with plumb and lines, but we're gonna set all of the beams that either support the ceiling, the rafters, both, and then the ridge beams. So this beam was like a five and a half by 15, I think it was 22 or 23 feet long, that runs front to back. That's going to support the vaulted section, as well as we're gonna land rafters on top of that. Again, it's kind of a challenge with just two people. So sometimes what we do, if Kyle can't see me, in this case he can, I can signal. With the tagline, I can move things around. You just know you're gonna do a little bit of up and down work to get it positioned just right. 
Although we are getting a lot better and with that trust chip, it is a huge improvement. Other times, we just call over our wireless Bluetooth earbuds. We like the IsoTunes free, the link is in the description. I am an ambassador for them, but I have a coupon code that'll save you 10%. They, they're just so easy to use, and then we can communicate uh, hands-free. So technically the bearing is to the right, and that's why you can see a bit of a gap. That's the camber from the glue lamp. I'm attaching it with Strong Tie SDWC. They're really made for trusses and blah, blah, blah. I think I have a video on my channel if you wanted to see that in more detail. But we fasten it with those because it's easy. They don't split. They have a ton of uplift okay, compared so to toenails and nails. Yeah, and if I for any reason we need to move it, we can. They zip in a little quicker. Yeah. And I don't think comparing. Right. It's thinner and because it's fully threaded, that's why the head doesn't have to be so big. Nice. So. Yeah. Okay, let me ditch. I promise this is not an advertisement for Strong Tie, although they have sponsored some of my videos and I do enjoy working with them. All of our hardware happens to be Strong Tie, so in this case, it's a concealed hanger for a five and a half inch wide glue lamb across the kitchen that we're gonna pony wall up to and support our 24 foot rafters. So when they're high capacity hangers like this, I like to buy the ones that come with the SDS screws. Yes, they install a little bit slower. But again, again, you save a lot of time if you have to move it for any reason at all. And again, you get the higher capacity. It's a little easier on the body too. I don't have to go get a gun out. I tell you what, if you guys aren't using little impact drivers like this, they're really lightweight. Just roll one out and hide it in a wall cavity so you don't have to put it away. I know some guys that do that. But seriously, it just makes life easy. You don't have to run a hose, you're still without a cord, no hose, no extra gun. You get the point. By the way, a drill will install these faster, unless you speed up the video, but the impact gun is uh, its lighter weight. You're never gonna wrench your wrist. So there's a trade off there. We use the drill for like big screws, but generally speaking, we use these little impacts. Now, of course, I did not get any footage installing this beam. It wasn't a big deal. And you'll notice, as I give Kyle the measurement, that we do not have a column in the wall cavity where this beam is going to sit. Let me explain that in just a moment. Okay, to the head of the screw. 170 and three quarters is pretty tight. Okay. On the weather. And I feel these are the eyes of disarray. Now, I'm so old that I had that Stone Temple Pilots album on CD when it came out. So, just saying. I grew up here west of Seattle, so we got to hear all that stuff. Of course, they were not from Seattle, like Pro Jam was. Anyway, who cares? So, same thing, SDWC screws. I'm gonna attach those through our double king stud and the cripple wall framing. We have our four, four by six panel edge backing. Remember from the previous video, we like four by six because it makes the wall stiff and it goes up. Notice that I can run a screw underneath. Of course, I, again, like I said, I did not get any video, but the beam sits on top of that. We frame in the column after, no toenailing. I just don't like the toenail glue lamps because they split. Here's, again, that sidewinder carriage. You see a little bit better. I can rotate those forks 90 degrees to my left. That meant that I could drive around because we couldn't take that one tree down when we cleared the property. That's on the neighbor's property. We really wanted to. We were getting good at cutting. There it spins. This was our only access, by the way, to get around the house. Just enough room for the forklift. Thankfully, the little forklift's in the backyard. I know I've commented on this in previous videos, but pretty much since 2008, Kyle and I have been a two-person crew. Uh, at different times, we've had like a third person with us. The third person you saw in the previous videos decided to start his own business, so Shane, he'll come back and help us. But really, once he left, we shot some May the 4th Star Wars pictures, and that was his last day. 
but he'll come back to help us out. So you'll see him in future videos. But part of the way that we've been able to keep building homes with just a two person aging crew, mind you, is because we have the two forklifts. The one I'm operating here, we bought back in 2003. There was extra capital investment incentives back then when the economy was a little slow and there was a tax plan passed here in the States. We bought it and then in 2005, we bought the 1056 there in front. It's got more of reach. At that time, we had two framing crews going, two finished carpentry crews. And Pioneer Builders here, we had almost 20 employees. Shortly after that, <laughs> starting in about 2006, is when the market started to slow down and people were leaving just Kyle. That's how you do it. This is how you do we <clears throat> This is how we do it. I got in, I was coming around the corner, I was like, I gotta put the hat on. Those beams I just brought around the back with the machines, that would have gone in place where the hanger was you just saw, as well as another beam in the back of the great room. All of those beams really support rafter ridges. Now in this case, it's a five and a half by 15. Uh, one of them was 32 foot long, if I recall. I think that's this one. And then the other one was that, that extends the ridge was I think a 15 foot or 14 foot. Anyway, when we rig it, we find dead center and then we space it off so that the beam stays level. But the guy on the other end, with very little effort, he can raise and lower and pivot the beam. So Kyle's aiming it right for the beam pocket that's in our ray claw. So remember when we frame those, we keep our top plates connected. Once it's up in place, then we cut it out so that we can drop our ridge beam right in. Pretty simple. Kyle just fastens it with a screw. disclosure, as easy as that looked, I had the height wrong for that ridge. So we had to make a small adjustment to the post. Now, we just use one of these big timber screws to just raise that beam with that little impact driver. We add our piece a half inch, and now we have a consistent air gap all the way across. I don't, I don't know what I did wrong. I probably just inched it, but I do that a lot. Okay, so this takes us about a day to get ceiling joists and beams in. And basically, I consider that prep to actually start cutting rafters and framing them. What I like about this plan is notice here along the bottom. We have our single bay garage on the left. We have a five and a half by 15 that runs from left to right across the porch. And it's strapped to all of the walls. So that essentially connects, well, it literally connects that single bay garage shear walls to then the front bedroom shear walls. And then we have a single LVL that goes from that wall all the way to the rake wall at the bottom again, all connected. So we have a nice continuous load path across the bottom of that house. Going north to south from the garage, we have our eight foot garage wall. We have a beam strapped and connected that runs all the way to that rake wall. That's kind of, I call it a half rake wall. Again, same thing. So now all of those shear walls are connected. After that's done and we ceiling joist, then we have the beam that I mentioned earlier there at the top right, right in the middle. That's what goes across the kitchen and will uh, support the 24 foot rafters. You can see, of course, the main ridge beam. And then the vaulted great room at the top middle. There's our ridge beam set. It lands on a beam that connects. All of those beam, po po uh, all of those beam point loads then trace down to the footings that you saw when we did the footings, the walls, and then framed the floor. Kyle was off for the day and everything was too heavy for me to do, so I framed the master bedroom ceiling. We call this a hip tray, easy one person work. All of the components, the, the rafters, the hips, those are all pre-cut on the ground out of just two by four and then measure to fit in the upper part of the ceiling. I, normally we would wait for dry work or undercover to do this, but it was easy for me to do and it did give us a nice spot to balance our big two by 12, 24 foot rafters. Plenty strong enough. Now it's all coming together. Besides all the beams that we set, you can see how the rake walls all fit together, how the load paths are traced with the beams. We even got our rafters cut. So we're gonna get into that in the next video, how we went about cutting them. We've got some time-lapse footage of that. We're gonna start stacking the big rafters, the great room, etc. Thank you guys very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. it, uh, it honestly, it keeps work fun for me. So there it is. 
All the ceiling joists are in, all the beams are in, we're cleaned up. We are ready to start stacking that roof. Please hit the like and subscribe button. I will love you forever, even though we've never met. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.